of this evening. Are we on the brink of a millennial milestone? What does that mean? Well, figures from the Office for National Statistics suggest that millennials will form a bigger share of the voting population at the next election than their generational rivals, you could call them that, uh, the baby boomers. It all begs the question, what do the millennials want? Peter, I'm not going to assume your age, although you did tell me in the break. You're 41 years old. I so don't I think, mind admitting that, yeah. I think you're just on the cusp of being a millennial. Do you think that uh, millennial voters will start to have more of an impact now? And will that make a Labour government more uh, possible? Well, that's a really tasty question for me, because I think uh, <laughs> Go on. La Labour always benefits from higher turnout. So if, like some countries, if we had compulsory voting, Labour would do far better. I'm not suggesting that, but the votes that traditionally, uh, the groups that traditionally vote Labour have slightly lower turnout. That's younger people, people who are on lower pay, uh, people who aren't white, basically. Um, having a greater cohort of people in the electorate who are young, essentially, that will help the Labour Party. And obviously, you've got stats about demographic change, so that's just happening, regardless of the fact people change their minds the older they get. But I had a quick look at House of Commons report today, and at the moment, it's, it, it does seem for now that pensioners continue to have a huge weight in the electorate because turnout is higher. So if you can permit me two quick stats, um, researchers, there's about 650 seats in Parliament, yep. um, split them into the, the oldest... 65 seats and the youngest 65 seats. So, for example, somewhere like in a London will be a bit younger. There's more young people. So in the oldest seats, turnout was 61% to 78%. In the youngest 65 seats, uh, turnout was 53 to 77%. So basically, people are more likely to stay at home in young people's areas. So it, uh, it depends on turnout, basically, is what I you're saying. So, yeah. But I would just disagree with you on one thing or perhaps just uh, challenge you on one thing. You said that poorer voters are more likely to vote um, Labour. But we've seen quite a shift in who is voting Labour. It is a lot of graduates, younger graduates, uh, millennial graduates, uh, sort of office workers, um, uh, progressive cultural views, that sort of person is turning towards Labour. We've also seen from lots of polling that, you know, we often talk about how people become more conservative as they grow up. People aren't now. People are who are socialist when they're children, when they're teenagers, when they're young adults are keeping those socialist values way, way, way into their 40s nowadays. Um, so the shift in people's ideology and values is just changing rapidly, isn't it? Well, yeah, if I may, I say something um, slightly different about turnout. But anyway, in term, I think the challenge for Labour, and there is a big challenge for Labour, which is that uh, with a very low representation in Scotland and first past the post isn't going to help them, particularly in that regard, there's a risk that Labour, you know, as young, fairly liberal people like me turn into middle age, Labour becomes a party of cities and towns and um, don't get sufficient votes in... Um, you know, basically provincial Britain, much smaller towns, villages and the countryside, and to be elected as a government, um, both in principle, you yeah. know, one nation, and actually getting the sheer numbers of votes. You need to have representation everywhere, like uh, Thatcher did in the 80s and like Blair did in 97. Yeah, and the reason we're talking about this is because now the only age group in which the Conservatives have a narrow lead is the over 65s. They're finished with the rest of the electorate, it seems. He says looking hard at a baby boomer, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we make a rather interesting balance. Yes, I mean, at the moment, that is undoubtedly the case. And you can see why. I think it is an absurdity, of course, because, again, if Peter and I just stop our jousting, there's barely <laughs> a sheet of paper, actually, between the policies of the three political parties between Labour, Lib Dem and Conservative. There really isn't. The differences are utterly trivial. The levels of taxation, the, the, the general approaches to welfare have scarcely changed at all and, moreover, won't. I mean, at the moment, of course, you're in a vice. No government can do very much from this point because of simple fiscal fact. Um, one can chatter, one can make gestures, one can offer symbolic policies. Very, very little can be done without a willingness of radical change, which has to focus on government mm. expenditure. Which, and the two gigantically large items are welfare and the well, NHS. Well, on the welfare and, point. And there, you know, there's just a refusal. To, and nobody will think about them. So we're locked into this position. David, David the pension. Like could I ask a question, David? A question. I was just going to say, no, yeah, go on. Why not? Yes. Well, well, David, um, which benefits would you like to cut? I think triple lock. 
Pardon? Pensions triple lock? Uh, the pension triple lock should go. It is absurd that every pensioner gets two or three hundred pounds a year at Christmas. I mean, it's absurd that there are uni there's universal free transport. I mean, the pensioners now include some of the richest people in the country. It is simply preposterous. It's absurd that over 75s get free television licences. So I'm just, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm just listing my own group would, would where I bus think... Would bus passes in for poor pensioners? I'm, I'm saying that they should, they should be strictly means-tested. That, that it seems to me to be simply... Inic Matthew Paris says exactly the same thing. If you live in London, as I do, and I use public transport quite a lot because Islington Council has made it impossible mm. to drive in my borough. It's worth a great deal of money. It's wrong. And it is it simply wrong that we throw money around it like does, this? Let me ask. I mean, I mean, 